the Get Your Shift Together Men's Podcast with your host, Dr. Myron Edmonds. Welcome, 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 everybody, to the Get Your Shift Together Men's Podcast, helping brothers to win in what matters. I'm joined today by the usuals, Kimo, uh, Kimo in Tampa, Florida, Hines, with the hoodie, with the hoodie on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it must be cold in your house, huh? The air conditioning. Yeah, it's got a little cold in my office. Got to put a little hoodie on, you know, and then to yeah, represent yeah. for my guy, Jamie. Jimmy yes, Gallagher. Hoodie's always good. And then we got uh, DJ Walk. I mean, dude, you told us you want us to call you Jason, but you got DJ Walk <laughs> up there all the time. What is it, man? Are we, are we going with your stage name or are you Jason? No, it's my stage name. You crazy, man. We gonna, It might change, man. Week to week, man, I might switch it up. I don't know yet, man. So we're going to see. <laughs> listen, fellas, listen. This is the number one mids podcast on the planet, helping brothers to win in what matters. Y'all need to get your life together and get on this thing right now uh, and go ahead and share this. Uh, have y'all shared? Let me just ask the brothers. Have y'all have y'all shared? Have y'all shared and subscribed? I, I'm just curious. I'm subscribed. I'm subscribed. Are you subscribed, Jason? Oh, my God. Am I subscribed? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely shared all the content. I, I probably need to subscribe, though. Man, good Lord. Listen, Listen and, and, and you can subscribe on YouTube. You can subscribe on Apple, on Spotify, Google Podcasts. Listen, we all over the, the Internet. So subscribe yeah, it's, it's all the places. Everywhere. All the places. Um, let me take that down. Yo, so while I was... Um, you know, while we were preparing for this, we needed to just remind the folks just how important it is for you to subscribe and to be a part of this community. We got some amazing, amazing shows coming up. We've been on a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, May was a big month for us. We had a lot going on. We were doing conferences and traveling and all that type of stuff. But we're back. And um, yeah, man, help us out. Uh, subscribe. Give us a review. Yeah. Uh, you know, and um Man, let's let's take let's take this podcast to the nations. Let's take this podcast. Next to the level, nations. yeah, next level stuff. All right. Anyway, uh, question, today, question, Mari. Yeah, go ahead. How was the um, how was the conference down in Atlanta? Oh, it was good. It was good. Actually, I'm gonna get to that in a second. Uh, DJ Walk. Um, I just need you to follow the order of service. Listen, we have an order of service. <laughs> we're gonna follow the order of service, and I'm following the order of service. Hey man, no, you know there's normally... always one person on program who just <laughs> out, there's always one right there on the, on the side of the live. Chat. I, but Pastor, I got right a testimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pastor, I got a testimony. I just got to share. I just got to share it right now. The Holy Ghost gave it to me. <laughs> That's who DJ Walk is. <laughs> no, right. so uh, listen, y'all. The subject matter today. As I as I put in a thread, and listen, man, Jay, I know you're about to be mad at me here, man, but you know I'm messing around with this streamyard stuff, man, bro. I'm gonna have to change. I'm gonna have to change this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change. I mean, the reason why, man, is because I'm trying to put these banners up here in the band. There we go. And it, you know, anyway, listen, we're talking about ride or so die, <laughs> ride or die, building the right community to win in what matters. I want y'all to know, this was not on the schedule. This was not on the schedule. This was uh, this was prompted by the uh, by the man himself, uh, DJ Walk. DJ Walk felt led. He was watching some stuff on TV and he felt led that he needed to get into the subject today. Anyway, that's going to be our subject matter today, fellas. Listen, do us a favor, make see, some comments. We got a subscriber on Spotify. Spotify, Good. thank you, uh, uh, my sister. I'm assuming that's a sister. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yep, yep, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Listen. I've grown. If the ladies want to appreciate the podcast, so be it. Just know, ladies, that we're here to speak. But, but the ladies can't be hating, though. You have to be here as a listener, watcher. Don't be commenting a whole lot. All right, you can partake. All right. Hey, listen, you... don't be don't be hating. Listen, we're going to put something up on the screen right here. Kimo, why don't you tell them about it as I'm putting it up. Uh, what, what's, what's, oh, well, what's, what's it's a question. It's a question. Are you winning in the things that matter? If you're a brother on here, are you winning in the things that matter? And what's maybe the, you say yes. What's the link again? I, I, I thought I typed it in. I didn't get it. What's, what is it called? I am a high integrity man dot com. I am a high integrity man dot com. 
Right. It's like, you know, people say, are you winning? And you may say yes. And the question I would have for you is, how do you know? Am I, am, are you hearing an echo? Okay, it's gone. No, no, no I'm not how hearing do you know? How do you know? And, and that's what this is all about, right? This assessment, this free assessment takes about literally two and a half minutes, helps you to figure out how are you, are, how are you in terms of winning and the things that matter. So drop the link, put the link up one more time for us, Myron. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it on and keep it there right at the bottom so they can keep it right there in their face. I am a highintegrityman.com. Hey, Kimon, do you know what your results were? Do you remember? Yeah. At the time I took it, I was, what was it? I was thriving. At the time I took it, I was thriving. Uh, of, of course you were, Kimon. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course, Kimo Hold on, Jason. Jason. Thriving. What, what, what were your results, Jason? I didn't take it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, listen, this man, is listen, the slack I, in the day. Hey, listen. I have not taken it yet. Jason, it's it's been a long work week, I'm going to put it in the chat it. for you, Jason. I'm going to put it in the chat for you. <laughs> hey, Jason is slacking, man. We're coming for him today, man. I mean, we're coming for him. This man is not even at home. He's not in. But listen, I got to give Jason props, though, man. Jason is on the road traveling, man. You know, he's got his family. The man, he hasn't taken the assessment, but he's winning. I yes. saw about four generations in his hotel room right now. <laughs> hey, he man, got it all covered. He got it all covered. Man, listen, I I had to change hotels because all these Negroes just want to. Hey, listen, I'm like Moses. They all want to follow me, man. They want to. They want to come to where I am, you know. So I had to change. I had to get the suite with the separate bedroom so the kids and the wife could be here. And then they got the the pop here, man. You know, so, you know, this whole thing, man. He, listen, side note: my dad wants to be on the podcast so bad. He's in oh, the background he really? right now, waving his hands. He wants man, to say hey, something man, so hey, man, bad. Hey, man, OG, come on. Tell the OG, come on, just man. wave. He could just wave at us. Why you can put the oh, let the, let's see the OG. <laughs> Let us see. Hey, listen, by the way. Switch, Matt, they, switch that view back, Mario, for him to do that. Huh? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Come on, come on. You don't want to move this camera? Come on, Just come bring on. the OG. Come on, come on. Come on. Here, this is the OG go, of OGs go, right go, here. This is my guy. Come on, come on. Now you don't want to be on the podcast. You got to prep that man. Listen, I'm his agent. You got to prep that man. You can't just pull him in on here. We got to prep this man. Man, it's all good. Hey, oh, no, no. If you're not gonna be on camera, you can't be in the background yelling this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, sir. Calm down. I'm an OG, okay. okay, you're an OG. All right, I got you. Pipe down. Oh uh, man. Anyway, let's let's get into it, man. I know we're waiting on our our brother Lance J. He's got some things going on, but I'm really honestly, I'm really curious to hear what with Lance J. We might have to tag him at the end. I'm really curious to see what he's got to say. A lot of stuff is going oh, yeah, on in sports. A lot is going on in sports, but nevertheless, I'm excited for this. We, you know, DJ Walk, Jason Walker, Amaz, Mr. Amazon himself, traveling all over the country for them now. I mean, he's a made man. He's a made man. This guy, <laughs> this guy, man, he uh he got bubbling on the block. He's got uh man loss. Now he got man loss. I mean, right. Definitely. Every week there's like a new segment, brother. We can't keep up with this guy. Talk to us, man. What kind of laws you got today, man? All this ice yeah. cream and don't wear in slides with no socks and stuff Listen. like that. Give it to us. So the man law or question. Oh, there goes Lance J. Today. We'll add him in a second. Go. What's up, Lance? Fact, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring in Lance J for these uh for these man laws and yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. go ahead. What's, what's, going going on? On? what's going on? Man, great, great. great to be back. Just, just in time for Jason's man laws, uh <laughs> uh, sir. Just enjoy yourself. Go ahead, Jay. Be interesting. So, so, so not a man law today, but a little open discussion slash question, which can be a man law, right? So as summer is approaching, right? We went to the ice cream, we went to the slides. It's a new epidemic or a new pandemic, however you want to call it, that's happening. It's men in little shorts. Now, question, what? how short are we supposed to go with these shorts, guys? For real, because I didn't see some brothers out there with some shorts that, listen, back in the 90s, we wore like long, back, we wore jams in the 90s. You know what I I'm saying? Those, yes. Jams. You know, our shorts were long, past the knee. That, that was almost. Also, that was also suboptimal. <laughs> 
<laughs> Almost mid leg. Now I'm not saying don't put on no. No, well I am saying we we're not gonna do the man capris, right? But how short are we supposed to go with these shorts, fellas? Because I didn't see some offenders out there that I mean I know you. My Dr. Myron Edmonds, you like to be a little, you know, metro, you know, what you're looking at everything. So <laughs> now nah, I have short, just, I've shortened my shorts. I've shortened them. I've shortened you, them. Have you I've shortened, shortened the shorts? Well, listen, I, I, I was watching something the other day, and I, I'm glad you brought this up because I, I agree with you. I think the trends are getting a little ridiculous now. So I was, I told, matter of fact, I don't know if I said this to you, Jay, but I said to somebody, I said, the, the way I've lived long enough to see how styles mm -hmm. have come back. Right. You know what I'm saying? How they start. And so I'm seeing my son, who's a baller, right? He's they're rolling their shorts all the way up, man. You seen this? They want their shorts, they want their shorts mad short. And I said, I promise you, a day is gonna come where we're gonna be looking like Michael Cooper out in these streets. What what I we we I used to wear the high socks. Remember that Jay Lewis? But uh, there's a DC, that was a DC thing. It's a high socks, but we wore long short i was watching Allen iverson his shorts were so long it, it seemed like it should have been against league rules for him to wear shorts that long but man i am with you on this dj walk it's getting ridiculous it's getting out of hand now you can't even find a good pair of shorts out there in the stores anymore because they're all trendy and tight and not made for the black man's thighs and behind go ahead so my thing, so my my thing. thing. My contribution, I think for men, I don't want to see your feet and I don't want to see your glutes. <laughs> I never want to see that, regardless of what the temperature is. Those are two things I don't want to see in men ever under any circumstance. So, so my thing, I try to get Kimon's like, West you know, Indian. Kimon's West Indian. I promise you, he wears oh, slides yeah. with oh, no yeah. socks on. Yeah. Yeah. I promise yeah. you, yeah. he does. <laughs> yeah. he Wait, well, if Jamie, Jamie Kalasar is saying the shorts are getting too short, they're getting too short. Too, if, no, if Jamie, no, listen. If Jamie says that, then it must be. It must be. True. I know. Listen, I try to go a little bit above the knee, a tad, a smidge above, uh, just like probably touching my upper knee, mid knee. I don't want to go past the knee, but you know, I'm not gonna go like mid thigh. Some brothers be wearing mid thighs, man. Some brothers be out here wearing. If you got, if you got a nice body, why, why can't you? Uh, listen, they don't have to be higher than the mid thigh, but. It, it look, it looks, it looks good, man. When you can show a little bit of those, uh, those quads, man. Come on, bro. Y'all, 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 y'all. Listen, let me tell you why you don't like that. Because we, most of us don't have the bodies to 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 be able to handle these styles. That's why we didn't go totally skinny jeans. <laughs> we got these dad bods, and that now make a man law out of that. With all these dad dudes out here with dad bods with mad skinny pants on, looking like old boy yeah, from. Um, from what's the name of the movie, man? Uh, with the minions, uh, you know, oh, yeah. um, Groove, looking brown like Groove. body up top and skinny legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a man looking like that Groove. One. Hey Jay, like if Groove. I ever see you with some skinny jeans on, man, I'm gonna personally take you to the woodshed, man, <laughs> and, and beat you up behind. Like we we should not be wearing those super skinny jeans. Now that's man, but listen, be. it's 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 it's. It's a thing, though. I don't know if they're trying to soften up the male image, man, but, you know, we want to keep the masculinity flowing, especially in the black male community, man. We want to be, you know, stay up on our masculinity. And that's it. I'm just I'm just worried about all this softness. Ice cream cones, dudes out here wearing open toe sandals, short shorts. Selfies. I'm just trying, I'm just selfies in the mirror. I'm just trying to save all my <laughs> brothers. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I want us to stay. You feel me? I want us he's to, not you wrong. Know, he's not wrong. He's not wrong what he's saying. I, as I normally boy, would disagree. David Goggins would say, David Goggins, everybody know I love David Goggins. I want stay us hard. to all stay hard, pause, but, you know, Stay committed to manhood. That's my thing, man. Let's not soften up, fellas. I know they're trying to soften us up, you know, but let's stay on the mask. Hey, Kimon, nice. you That's see nice. how he can't resist adding multiple man laws? Then he's now he's talking about <laughs> men taking selfies in the bathroom. Oh, well, no, he said yeah, that last yeah. week. That was last week. Oh, he said, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, last yeah, week, yeah. we didn't have no podcast. Well, the last time I oh, when okay, so John was on, when John was on. Wow. Listen, man. I, I, listen, I can't wait to hear what uh, Lance J got to say today. I can't wait because of all the stuff's been happening in sports, man. Man, I've been, I've been a reflective, man. I wanted to start off, um, you know, 
I, I don't want to hot take it. It was announced this morning that LeBron James is a billionaire. And I wanted to speak on that, man. This is, you know, this is a, a podcast that really uplifts the brothers, uh, really talks about potential and, and us uplifting each other, working together. And LeBron James, to see him be as successful as he's been, that's so major, not just for his on the court prowess, but for the African American community and uh, building wealth. You know, I talk on my show all the time about the impact that redlining had on black communities, uh, meaning that your house was not worth as much because of redlining, meaning that you couldn't get a loan, meaning that your house was worth less and you had less money to pass down to your seeds. And we bang on LeBron, we talk about his hairline, we talk about um, his, the GM, we talk about all sorts of stuff. But to see him uh, achieve billionaire status while he's still he's still putting up 30 a game and he's a billionaire. And, and that's a great message to send. You see what he's doing with his school in Akron. And it's a testament to his perseverance, because I know if I had a billion dollars, I'd never see you three Negroes ever again for the rest <laughs> of the time. Hey, I would not be. Hey. Doing the Lance Day show, I'd be in Aruba or the beach somewhere drinking a virgin Mai Tai. So, um, you know, shout out to LeBron James. And also, Myron, you know, come on. Steph Curry's going to be a billionaire eventually. You know, Kanye West is a billionaire. We see brothers that maybe are polarizing. You know, it's easy for us to take pot shots at them based on how they perform and if I like the album or not. But to see people like that, Kevin Durant's probably going to be a billionaire. If Zion Williamson could get his weight down to 230, he'll be a billionaire. There are a lot of people. Pat Mahomes, <laughs> Pat Mahomes is going to be a billionaire at some point. Oh, yes, he will. See all of this black wealth to where now we have the ability. And when you're a billionaire like LeBron, you can have clutch sports. You can, you can change the paradigm. You know, I used to say this uh, to my female friends about Kamala Harris. Um, People are always talking about, you know, during the debates, Kamala Harris didn't really, she could have really abused Pence and, you know, women always have to pull back on stuff. I said, the way to win is by getting into the big chair. When you're in the big chair, you might have to play some games to get the big chair, but once you're in there, you can make the changes that are needed. So um, just shout out to LeBron, man. I, I think it's just a great testament to what he's done. Uh, we talk about LeBron in the news cycle. At the end of the day, this guy, was on the cover of Sports Illustrated at 14. He's lived up to all of the hype. He's all of it. Four rings, you know, three and a half rings if you give him half of that bubble fiasco. Don't be disrespectful. He's run three and a half rings. Um, he's done things for kids. He's never been arrested, never had a DUI. You know, the, the worst thing he did was give a million dollars to the Boys and Girls Club of Akron when he said that he was going to Miami. And if that's the worst thing someone could do, um, you know, his legacy is, is phenomenal, both on and off the court. Wanted to talk a little NBA Finals before I head out. Oh, let's go. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah, that's, hold on. That, Don't be slick. Don't be slick. Yeah, I got don't questions. Don't be slick. Yeah. You said Steph Curry and Kevin Durant will possibly be billionaires one day. Absolutely. I think, the, I think one of the reasons why LeBron is a billionaire today is because of his financial portfolio. He has his hands in a lot of different pots, a lot of endorsements. I don't see a lot of like real solid endorsements for Steph Curry. Of course, he has an Under Armour deal. Um, I I may be a little blind to all his portfolio, but I think the reason why LeBron has reached his financial status so so quickly is because his hands being in multiple pots like when he moved to la i knew this i knew that was for the spring hill company i knew that he was going to get into bro you TV. must not be watching tv yeah i would disagree with that strongly you know but steph curry very involved in silicon valley he has a yes. huge stake of ownership in under armor that's why kanye west is a billionaire because he owns the yeezy brand you know he's not an MVP, right. he's an owner he owns gap you know, LeBron is a is an owner, kind of like you know, similar contract to what Jordan has with with Nike. KD, you know, just because KD has burner accounts and is sensitive AF, he's a businessman. Like he's he's killer. You know, he's got he's got a lot of 
a business deal. So I, I would disagree with that. Just some people move in silence. I know you're big on talking about that walk. You know, everybody doesn't uh, broadcast what they do. LeBron's brand is to be on Instagram telling us everything that he's doing. That's the Lance J brand. I'm driving a G wagon. I'm bragging. I'm throwing money in the air at strip clubs. That's what I do. Um, but but everyone's brand isn't that way. Some people, <laughs> I would say that both Steph and KD, they got a lot of stuff going on. It's just they're not as public with it. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Doing that's what I said. Um, that's why I said I might not be in the know of what's no. going on because you know LeBron, he really puts out there, you know right. what what he's doing. You know, but I'm not just feeling expertise, man. You out there spinning on the ones and twos, playing that new Kendrick. You know, you telling us what to listen to, what's cool, what's hot in the streets. But there's there's a lot. You know, I just think the concept of black wealth. I think the old days, we you know, there's there's this thing where the Caucasian community at times can look at these uh, black entertainers as pawns and as property. And I think, you know, back to LeBron, LeBron was one of the first athletes that said, look, Cleveland, I'm not your property. I love you. I want to, I want to deliver a chip, but you don't own me. I own me. And, and that's important. And I think you'll see that with the Patrick Mahomes of the world, people coming in, you got people with this NIL in college, man, you got people getting a bag. You go, you go come into the league with five M's. Because you're getting, you know, there's a kid <clears throat> that plays for Texas that got a, a deal with Lamborghini as a running back for Texas. Like he's going to be pushing a, a Urus around the campus of, of Texas. So I just think I'm, ce- I'm celebrating black wealth and black excellence. It's great that we have these opportunities and, and I'm excited um, about yeah, that. Let's, now let's talk finals. Before we do, I just want to tell you that um, out of all of your takes and you have, and, and there have been quite a few, um, the majority of your takes have been about LeBron. I've, I've been keeping count. You are obsessed with LeBron James, and um, I, I and I'm glad to see I'm it. Trying to appeal to the host. <laughs> I, thought- I actually know that you got a pair of LeBron James pajamas on under under that shirt that we can't see. Hey, look, I, I'm not that big of a fan of LeBron, man. Just a little bit, man. I, I'm not living in the past at all, man, at all. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Talk. Let's talk about the finals real quick, man. And then finals, man, I think it's going to be a very interesting finals, man. It's just, you know, conceptually, Golden State's depth is very intriguing to me. Some would say that the Golden State team that is structured now is better than the Kevin Durant team. Hmm. Uh, obviously, when you have Kevin Durant, you know, who's either the best player in the world or second or third best player in the world, along with Steph and, a, and a Clay in his prime. But the depth, I've really watched this playoffs. If you've looked at Jordan Poole, hmm. if you've looked at Kaminga, if you've looked at when before Gary Payton uh, Jr. got hurt, if you look at what Wiggins is doing as the fourth or fifth option, I mean, like, Wiggins is 6'8", has a seven-foot wingspan, and was a top pick, and he's their fifth option. I think it's interesting because uh, Steph is getting old, Clay is getting old, Draymond's getting old, but this will be almost a Harvard Business Review blueprint. You have the one way where you put three superstars together and have no bench. It's basically the four of us coming off the bench. Golden State completely retooled their team, and I think their depth – is what's going to carry them. I don't think that Steph Curry is going to be putting up 30 a game. He's going to have Smart guarding him. That's going to be difficult. Um, So I think I like Golden State in six because of the depth. That said, you know, Myron, I always hedge my bets. And I wouldn't wouldn't make it a foregone conclusion either. We'll really have to see tonight because Boston has Tatum, who's 6'10", has Al Horford, who's 6'10". All of their guys are thick. All of their guys have bulk. And it'll be very interesting to see those contrasting styles. It's almost like a football game. It reminds me of the Seattle Seahawks when they played Denver in the Super Bowl. You had Peyton Manning threw for 55 touchdowns that year. They had the offensive juggernaut. But Seattle had the LLB. You know, they had they had the Legion of Boom. And when they got on the field, they put the hammer to them. Beat them up, boy. I mean, beat them. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let's, let's, let's keep in mind I'm a Broncos fan, right? So let's, All right. Let's, well, no, yeah, but, you're, but you, are you a sane man? Did you, did, <laughs> did you see, look, I, I, Peyton Manning, I think Peyton Manning retired after that year. Did he, did he not? No, <laughs> no, no. He won a ring and then he retired. Oh, okay. All right. He should, he should have retired. They, they beat, but, they, uh, I'm not going to lie. That game was over from the first snap. But they did. After that, they went out and got, they went out and upgraded their defense and then they put the 
same thumping on Cam a couple of years later, then Peyton Manning retired. But I just think this finals will be very intriguing. It's two completely opposite sides. In football, I always go with defense. Basketball is physical, but it's not as physical as football. I like the Warriors because of their experience and their depth, but it could be a very interesting series. I think the very. smart uh, – Jalen Brown and smart, how they manage with Clay and Steph, they're younger, they're bigger, they're thicker, they're more athletic and explosive. It's going to be very – it's going to be a very interesting series. I like Golden State in six, but I think you're going to see a lot of subplots. I can see Al Horford um, – Given some problems as a stretch for, and I'm curious to see who's going to guard Tatum. Are they going to have Clay guard Tatum? Are they going to have Draymond? Because if Draymond guards Tatum, he's going to get cooked. That's not going to be. They're going to put Wiggins on it. Okay, okay, we got you. We got your. We got your pick. Let me hear the rest of these guys' pick real quick before we let you go. Uh, let's start with uh, Jason. Who you got? Who you got in these finals? I mean, it's very hard, man, not to take Golden State, but out about. What I will say is I don't think nobody is hungrier on that court than Jason Tatum. Nobody wants this ring more on that court than Jason Tatum, and that may be a factor that comes up. I can see that. How about you, Hines? Who you Warriors got? in six. Warriors in six. No, and, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. Warriors in five. Warriors, in five. Oh, good Warriors in five. Yeah, good I actually see this going seven games, and I'm going to pick the Celtics in seven. Interesting. Why, why do you see the Celtics? I'm just curious. Why? I just think defensively, man, they are perfectly designed to contain the Warriors. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody can stop the Warriors, but I think they're perfectly designed from a matchup perspective uh, to, um, I mean, every position on the court. I don't think that they can, I don't think the Warriors can guard all of, 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 of the Celtics roster. I think somebody is my, liable each night to get off and really and really cook that team. But I do think that each night, if they if they play defense the way they always do. Now, I was a little concerned after that last series because it was like a blowout one game, then a blowout another game, and I don't know what that was about. But yeah. um, the only thing I'll say is the Celtics only play seven players. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the depth is an issue. You know, they bring Williams off the bench, and, and he's a three point shooter. Um, they have a very short rotation. I think. Yeah. If it was just Clay and Steph and Draymond, I'd say I'd say Celtics in six, maybe in five. I just think that depth. When you have Kaminga, who is the number one player in the G League, and um, you know, when he plays, he's coming off the bench, getting twenty and ten off the bench, and he's like your ninth option. I just the, the depth, um, and, and I'll let you guys go. Thank you for having me. It's great to be back on. It's the, the Warriors is a testament. And the Milwaukee Bucks are a testament. There's so many teams that think, I got to get the top pick. You know, Knicks been looking for the top pick forever. My, my Wizards been looking for the top pick. Um, you know, the Warriors, Clay is Clay, Steph, they're not top picks. You know, Draymond's a second-round pick. You know, Kaminga's a G League guy. Jordan Poole went to Michigan. He was he was like a 27th pick. Yeah, the they, built, they built their team. Out there if you could develop it. You know, Giannis was the 13th pick in the draft. He's the best player in the world. You don't have to be KD. You don't have to be LeBron. You don't have to be the chosen one since high school. Find talent, develop it. There are dudes, you got the G League in Africa. Find some of them brothers over in the Congo, the 6'9", throwing the ball off the backboard, and have to be develop them in the NBA players. That's actually a uh, – I would say that that's a great segue to our discussion today because we are seeing some, some some really good teams, I think, is what we're starting to see now. And it's not just dominated. LeBron's not in. Some of these other folks, uh, big names. Actually, I will say this. It's really disappointing. I don't care what nobody says. The playoffs have not been that exciting to me this year. Without LeBron, without Kyrie, without – Kevin Durant, without Kawhi, without Paul George. I mean, to me, some of your top stars. I mean, I miss it's Kawhi. Like when, when, Iona, when Iona beats Duke in the first round, we're excited that day. But then we realize yeah, then we have to like, you know, know. it's Iona versus North Carolina State. Nobody wants to watch that. Yeah, who wants to see that? You know, anyway. All right, all right, bro. Good take, man. Good stuff, man. And always yeah. glad to hear you talk about LeBron. All right, all we're right. all of <laughs> uh, Listen, guys, we got a, uh, we got a great subject today. We're talking about ride or die, you know, how to build, how men can build a, you know, a community to help them win. And I thought it was great that um, that Jay actually pointed out that basketball, at least in that respect, is starting to – it's starting – I say, I should say it's starting to become – but we are starting to see teams win that are actual teams. They have role players. They It's not all about the um, – 
the stars, even the Celtics. The Celtics is a great example of he how a coach went in there and, he, and, you know, Tatum and Brown could not coexist. A good coach came in there in his first year. And by the way, he is the father of Nia Long's baby <laughs> and they're getting married. God bless that man. That man is winning. I want you to know he is winning in the things that matter. I do know that's the, her fiance. I didn't realize they had a child together. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, my wife gets me all the tea, man. I mean, <laughs> that man is winning in the areas that matter. But anyway, um, so, yeah, I mean, a squad is, is, is important. And so I saw this article, and I know Jay raised this subject because of some things that happened in sports, and I want to have him weigh in in a second. But I, I saw this article, man, and it was crazy. Uh, this is from the americansurveycenter.org. And what they're saying is that American men, American men suffer from a friendship recession. Some other websites mm. and other bloggers have called it a pandemic of loneliness. And listen to what they are saying are the reasons why. And I'm just going to put this out here. I'd love for all of our viewers to just weigh in in the comments and to share what your thoughts are about this. Uh, but uh, here's, here's, what, here's what they're saying. They're saying that declining religious involvement, brothers are not as religious, church going, um, you know, pandemic affected that lower marriage rates. Brothers are not getting married uh, as soon as they used to, as young as they used to. Changes in the workplace. Brothers are working from home. A lot of brothers are working from home post pandemic <coughs> that may be creating a surge of disconnection. And uh, it says that at least the percentage of men with at least six close friends has fallen since 1990 from 55% to now is around 27%. And they're suggesting that it will get as low as 15% if uh, there's not some kind of major change in that. What are your thoughts, man? Male loneliness, having a squad. Go ahead, Jay Walk, DJ Walk. You said something. Me and Kimo, actually, I want to tell you this. You better come correct on this take that you're about to give. <laughs> me, and, me and Kimo were a low-key like uh you know wondering like now what is this but go ahead I, i'm gonna see how you go how you go how you gonna weave this in go ahead <laughs> um i do um agree that you know the amount of men that are connecting is dwindling in the past two to three years i think that a lot of it as you see my daughter, she just, everybody wants to get on the show today. It's fine. Hey, going, and man. she loves the camera Every, too. She's like, hey. everybody wants to get on the show today. I can't do it. I can't do it alone. But anyway, um, I think a lot of it has to do with the pandemic. You know, a lot of people just aren't social in times. You would think that people would kind of bond together, you know, um, the social disconnect is happening. I'll be honest, when the pandemic first hit, me and my college friends, we would get on um, Zoom and all the social conferences um, online weekly, you know, but then that that kind of dwindled down. And, you know, honestly, I just think that, you know, the relationships between friends, period, you know, because of social distancing and things that have taken place, you know, I just think that it's just putting a crush on friendship, you know, um, and I'm very adamant about having a circle around you that will make sure that you're you're successful because I think that the circle that you keep is very important on if you rise or fall and winning in the things that matter. You know, getting a good circle around you of brothers that want to. Now, here's a take that I really want to drive home: brothers that want to see you win, brothers that want to mm -hmm. see you be successful. Mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. not the fake friends, not the friends that's there just to see what you got and what you're doing, but the brothers that are in your life, adding to your life, that are there to lift you up when things are down and there to be rocks in your life, like cornerstones in your life to push you to greatness. You know, that's the thing that we always have to evaluate. Who's in my circle that really wants to see me win yeah, for real, for yeah, real? Yeah. Yeah. For real, for yeah. real. Who really yeah. wants to see me win? You know, yeah. or who's there just to spy and see where I'm at in life to evaluate their life to my life to see if they're doing better than me or some crazy foolishness like that, you know? So I think, you know, I mean, I'll be honest, as I've gotten older and 
Mary life has, you know, came into play. My circle of friends have gotten smaller, man. I mean, my group chats, I'm probably in two solid group chats right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my circle of friends have gotten smaller. You know, I have probably two or three really, really, really close friends that I could share everything with. And I just think that that just comes with me just evaluating my life, looking at the people I have in my life saying, you know, who really wants to see me win? Who is benefiting me and pushing me to greatness so I could be successful and win in family, um, marriage, you know, the relationships on my job, just winning the things that matter, you know, who, who you keep, you keep let, me, let me jump in here to get Kimon away in, but you keep saying something over and over again. I just want to highlight Kimon before I go to you is he keeps saying he wants brothers that want to see him win. I heard somebody say a long time ago, they said, you can tell who your friends are, not by those who are there for you when you're going through a tough time, but by those who can celebrate you when you're experiencing success. A lot of our friends don't know how to handle uh, good right. things happening to us, but they can handle us when, you know, when we, we're going, we're going through, it takes a, a secure man, I should say, to be able to say, man, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I'm, I, I like, I like yeah. what you're doing. Kimon, your thoughts. They're saying that women tend to invest more in maintaining friendships than men do. Do you agree with that? Do you think that's true? I don't know. I wonder. Yeah, I, wonder I think that. I think life transitions, right? Things happening in our lives do test our friendships, right? So as Jason mentioned, I'm when we were all when guys were single, we have that in common. I get married, you stay single, right? Okay, it's cool. We rocking with that. But you're you're talking about your dating habits, you're talking about all the sisters that you're checking for, I'm married, right? So then we're losing some of the, what we had in common. I start having kids, you're still single, right? You're doing some of that stuff, right? And then let's even say I start valuing some things spiritually or even career-wise, career wise, right? I'm going after this and you stay okay, you know what? I'm doing this. I think what gets difficult for us is how do we keep some of the relationships that we had when we start growing, when things start happening and the people that we had those relationships with, right? Brothers, um, when they stay in the same place that we were before. I think that's, that can be difficult for a lot of brothers. And I can imagine the challenge for the person who this is where we were. Like you changed up, like you're expecting me now to mm -hmm. be where you are. Mm -hmm. So I think there's some of those dynamics. We're not able to spend time together. People begin moving. There are a lot of things that happen that test relationships. I guess that's my point. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, and to your point, the, state, the same study on the American Survey Center.org said single men fare the worst. One in five American men who are unmarried and not in a romantic relationship report not having any close friends. You know what's crazy about this? Because, uh, Kimon, you may have heard me say this before on the, on the uh, Winning Circle. Um, shout out to the Winning Circle brothers. In the Winning Circle, on our motivational call, um, I, I was sharing with the guys that it said, it also said that married men, this goes back to your point, married men who are in a career tend to, it, it said they have less friends, but I think it's more along the lines of what you're saying. I think we just don't prioritize. Now, now this is why I would say mm -hmm. that we don't prioritize relationship and community. Right. Because there's a lot of pressure on us to pay the bills, provide, right. take care of family. I just don't, I mean, I'll be honest. I, I can see how a brother would not prioritize that if he is married, has a family. You know, let's say he's in his 30s or 40s. Maybe he has parents that he's taken up, taking care of. Jason, you follow me? Like when in a week does a brother have time to invest in relationships with other right. brothers other than a text thread, if in fact he's got small children, you know, you know, parents that he's taking care of, I just think brothers don't value it as much because they have right. other things that are as valuable. Does that make right. sense? Something I want to yeah. add, and I think if y'all could, you, sorry, sorry, Jason. Go ahead, no, go ahead. Um, I think sometimes the like, what what are our relationships for at different stages, right? Yeah. Like at different stages, when I'm younger. It's for a different reason, right? This might be just for um, social interaction, Hang out. Yeah. hanging out. When I start getting older, it's for it's for connections, right? It can be for connections. Networking. So you're doing this, yeah. 
But then, and then you get to another level, it's like, you can get me in a door and that kind of stuff. So understand that we we might sometimes put different, like Jason says, if you're not about winning, well, then your relationships are for a particular thing. It's not just for finding common ground and we just kicking it. Is that good? Go ahead, Jay. I don't know. That sounds, that sounds <laughs> yeah. like our relationships become more about like achievement than just because all the reason I'm saying that now Jay uh, Jay I know you guys but what you can do here. for me you know what I'm saying yeah what you can do for me and it's like I every time we take we take this men's trip chemo and every time we go on that trip we're like man we need to do this more often and all we're doing is sitting around but, you know watching sports on. hanging out but look look at who's in the room though and then that, not, not even to, like think about who's in that room even Let's when we're all this chair hanging out kicking it yeah. We're all at a, not just at a certain age and stage, but we're at a certain level of achievement. So understand, even though we're saying that, just I, evaluate it. I mean, just, I gotta push back on you a little bit, Kimo. That's fine. Um, and um, I think the friendships really don't have anything to do with achievements, right? So if I'm super successful, I could still be best friends with Pookie that you know what I'm saying live on. 126. Mm -hmm. Now, our friendship may change because I may not want to, how can I say this without sounding bad? I may not want to put him in certain environments that I'm in because of the status and the um, the the level that, I, that I've reached, right? Like, I'm not going to bring John John to the sushi dinner for my company, even though, you know, even though that's my man, so you know what I'm yeah. saying? That's my man, a hundred grand. I ain't going to trust John, John at, you know what I'm saying? Some high price sushi restaurant to, you know what I'm saying? Go back and forth and kick it with my boss or my business owners. You know what I'm saying? Just because I don't think that he, he may not, I don't know. He may not feel comfortable in that room, Yeah, you know? Um, so I don't think it has to do, anything with status, honestly, just like Myron said, man, I think it has to do a lot with time. Well, you know, I don't think it's status. I don't think it's status. Think it's, status. it's what we have in common. I think that's what I'm saying. Oh, what we have in common. Yeah. I used to give my wife grief about this all the time. Like, like, like last year, man, um, she was like, you know, the kids are my best friends, you know, like I don't really have time to hang out, you know, so blase, blase. And honestly, that's, that's kind of how I feel like, like right now, like the, like my, Best friends, my people's, my clique is my family. Like, you know, like that's that's who I'm gonna kick it with on Friday night, you know what I'm saying? Or, or you know what I'm saying, Saturday. You know, that's 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 dope. Those my people, you know. I mean Hey, that, listen, the number one the number one DJ in Cleveland, man, is at home with his family, man, watching yeah, television. And man. it's interesting, J Jason, how old how old are listen, your kids? Listen, how old are your kids? You. No, how old are your kids? He's asking. Yeah, um, two. Jackson just had a birthday yesterday. He's two and Zara is five. Oh, that explains it all, bro. I mean, so, so, I mean, so you I had a different stage. Age, yeah. I don't know stage. if it's a stage, right? That I'm in right now, but you know, that's, that's what I'm with. That's what I'm with 24 yeah. 7. Well, go ahead. I'm just saying, like, I feel, I feel like all of these are excuses. But, but mm -hmm. yeah. I think these are excuses for what I, I'm, let me just say for what we go ahead Kimo. but I'm just saying for what we're espousing, we're telling people get their shift together, spiritual life, health and wellness, integrity, and have a tribe. And we believe strongly that in order for a person to be successful, they have to have a close friends. Yeah. And I'm just saying like these, these are women, women have seem like they have close friends. They're whole, through everything through birth. They have their best friend in, in, the, in the room when they giving birth to the baby. I mean, every, almost every step of the way, I'm saying generally, stereotypically speaking, women have relationships. They take girls trips and they'll leave it. I mean, we I'm saying we the only ones that sit around talking about we don't uh, I'm at a different stage right now. I don't got no time for it. I mean, like, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, OK, OK. So a couple of things. I think one thing that you brought up that I, we I want to just underscore is men still need male relationships. Like, let's just say that, right? That's all so, I'm saying. right. Like single brothers, they yes. say are the loneliest, which tells you, even though this man might be getting attention from people of the opposite sex 
and may have more money, like disposable money, than we <laughs> right. might think, there's still that need. Now, mm-hmm. what I'm saying is when our stages in life change, we, we tend to have less in common with some of the people we had stuff in common with before. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. one of the things that maybe mm-hmm. we need to just um, nudge at a little bit if we don't have time on this one, continue this, is how do we navigate our friendships as life changes? And if I'm a single brother listening to this, or a brother who may not feel like I have a, a, a nice full tribe of friends, how do I make and, and build those friendships? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it all, you know what? It all has to deal with, or, you know, one major factor to contribute to you having, you know, a good tribe is your interest. Okay. You know, you have to get guys that are interested in the things that you are interested in, you know, um, a lot of times. Or you need to yeah. be places where you, you, I, I don't think you're saying we need. I'm saying like if a brother, they're saying dudes ain't going to church, dudes ain't at work in traditional work settings anymore post COVID. They switching jobs more often. These are places where we built friends. Yeah, it was yeah work, that's what I'm saying. School, uh, you're, you're, we ain't doing none uh, of that no more. Mm. You're, like, most of my male, well, all of my male friends, I could probably say, are like married. So it's like when we kick it, it's more like families kicking it. You know what I'm saying? We're just not, you know, very seldom here and there, you know, me and just a couple of my guys, you know what I'm saying, go out and, you know, get wings or do something like that. But like a lot of times it's like I'm going to the Bozeman's house, you know, with the kids, with the wife. I'm about to go see Alan and then, and then our families are going to kick it. Or I'm going to Myron's house and our family's going to like that's that's kind of how I'm spending a lot of my time at this stage because you made a good point. You said maybe it's the stage of life that you're in. But at mm-hmm. this stage of my life that I'm in right now, a lot of the time that I'm doing is generated towards family activities. Just like, you know, that's where I'm at right now. So like the the common friends where we used to go out and get wings every Tuesday and do this and do that, like that's just not happening for me no more. It's, right ne- it's necessary and to your point about time. Cause I want to, I really want to, I want to keep pushing this thing mainly from our framework. I, I just feel like no matter what stage you're in, a brother needs to be in a community. It says at the age of 18, we, we spend more than two hours a day on average with our friends around the age of 18. But this drops precipitously over the ensuing decade. By the time we reach middle age, which all of us are here, American men are devoting only 30 minutes a day to maintaining friendships or relationships if they have any. That's just not enough time. But think of, I mean... That, that that stat is probably a little bit misleading, right? At 18, okay. a lot of your friends are in school with you, right? You're in the dorm with your friend. Like, I'm thinking about my son. My son, he's home now and things are different. But in school, I mean, his friends are in his dorm room. Now, Jason, how am I spending more than an hour with my friends on a daily basis? That's a tough. I can see that being pretty tough. 30 minutes a day, actually. And, you know, you're right. As I'm reading it, I'm like, 30 minutes a day? That's pretty doggone good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, I w- for us, it's like the group text. You know, we're chatting with guys and mm-hmm. stuff like that. All right. Let, let, I want to I wanna bring this home because I know we got to go. Um, but real, some quick tips for the brothers that's watching, like who, who may be in this space where they just like don't have the community that they used to have. They're emerging out of covid like, what should they do, DJ Walk, in order to revive those yeah, necessary yeah. bonds? I say just reach out, man, to the people that you were connected with, man. You know, um, one thing about me and my best friend, me and my best friend, Santone Baker, which is probably my best friend in the whole world, one thing that we do is we always like to what we call keep the bread fresh. So so he's always reaching out. I'm always reaching out. It don't matter how busy we get, we always reach out. So one of the things that I will encourage the brothers is, you know, if you had those relationships that kind of went stale post-COVID, reach out, man. That's good. And just regenerate that bread, man. Keep that bread fresh, man. You know, just shout out a quick text or a quick call. Hey, man, I ain't talked to you in months, but... How you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you doing? I know I ain't talked to you probably about a year and a half, man, but what's going on, bro? You know what I'm saying? 
Hey, oh, listen, yeah. that that call. I mean, that call never fails, man. Yeah. Uh, I actually reached out to a brother. Same. How about you, Heinz? I know we're gonna get a hard stop here. What is your What's your recommendation? That's good, uh, Jason. What's your recommendation? I mean, I, mean, I can only just add to what Jason's saying, man. If you want friends, you got to be friendly. So yeah. people say, man, nobody's calling me. Like, are you calling other people? Are you showing up in places? Are you joining groups? You know, like the world is now allowing us to be. I'm gonna join this group. Join the group and don't be a lurker, man. Be someone who's active. You know, I'm here. How can I help? You know, how can I be connected? Ask questions. You know, do that. There may be some brothers that's watching, and I come across them all the time. They're like, I literally don't have any friends. I'm serious. I come a lot of brothers who like they don't have any close friends. And um, what I, all I can say is what the brothers have said. One way we know, and this is just research, that you can increase your likelihood of having friends is to go to places of interest. Go to church, you know, connect with brothers at work, connect with brothers based on your hobby, your interests, your workout, in the gym, uh, your, um, you know, um, business um, ventures, online courses. It's amazing how, r- real quick before we go, we started a mastermind. And, and this mastermind, men's, men's uh, breakthroughmastermind.com, for those that are interested, we had these five guys who never met each other and they came together, spent, uh, I made a, a, a quite an investment in order to level up in some areas of their life. And now these guys are like literally best friends. Oh, yeah, that's like, crazy. It's incredible. I've yeah. never seen it. I mean, the mastermind has ended, and these guys meet two times a week mm-hmm. uh, because they see the value. Anyway, hey, much love to y'all. Make sure y'all fill out the I am a high integrity man assessment. It'll take you literally two minutes. It'll tell you where you are and on the integrity spectrum. Are you a man of integrity? Why does this matter? Because men of integrity win in every area. That matters. We out of here. Let's go Celtics. <laughs>